so you don't know what a tilt shift lens is. Well, today we're going to discuss just that exact topic and what a topic it is. This is part of kind of three or four part series uh, discussing all of the ins and outs of these fabulous lenses and how they work and basically all the way from the ground up, how they work, what they are and what you can do to get the best out of your shots while using one. So for architecture, photography in particular, we're only going to be really interested in a couple of variations of these lenses. This one here that I'm holding in my hand that's on my camera is the 17mm tilt shift lens by Canon. There is also a 24mm version of this lens and I think Nikon has a 19mm and a 24mm as well. There is other versions like, for instance, the 45mm Canon tilt shift lens and they're great for shooting things like maybe the exteriors or the facade of a building, the face of a building, where you can compress the scene and, and, and maybe shoot from a rooftop opposite and get the face on of a building. But for interiors, we're interested primarily today in the 17 and 24 mil tilt shift lenses. So yes, before we get started, these are expensive lenses. Um, the three main reasons for this, complex moving mechanical parts, a larger image circle than a standard lens, and of course, economies of scale. Less demand means less manufacturing means higher price per unit. And in fact, mine's actually gone up in value since purchasing it. The second-hand cost now is actually higher than it was for me to purchase it brand new three years ago. This is the type of kit you buy as an investment. Gear rarely goes up in price. I've never actually tested the Nikon versions because I'm a Canon user. However, I have used, I do own the 17mm uh, Canon version and I have road tested on numerous occasions the 24mm uh, version of this lens as well. Combined, the 17 and 24 mil lenses are about as good as it gets for architecture photography. Combine them with something like a teleconverter to, for, to get an extension to either of those lenses and you've really got the ultimate combination. They handle flare incredibly well and are both extremely suited for architecture photography because of limited barrel distortion as well. Okay, the 17 mil that I'm holding here is incredibly sharp for its width and handles flare brilliantly well, especially when we consider this bulbous front element that it's got right here. The 17mm lens is probably the least understood lens in the whole entire DSLR lineup. This is because mainly it's a man manual focus lens, difficult to use, and people don't understand or use it then to its full capabilities. So being a manual lens, this lens is considered mostly professional. However, of course, Used correctly, amateurs could use this lens as well to get high quality results. Okay, I purchased the 17mm version of this lens for a number of reasons. One of them was to actually create panorama style photo uh, photography, um, where this lens would then create incredible sharp details and larger style prints. It's a topic that I'm gonna cover in another uh, video that's following up from this one how to create panoramics with these lenses. But today we're gonna to just focus on how to use them and what the key functions are. So how do you focus with one of these lenses? Well, it's only manual focus, as I've mentioned before, uh, since the mechanics of a lens like this make it impossible to have a focus system built in. They have two functions, tilt and shift, hence the name in the title. By using the tilt function, uh, it allows front to back depth of field, meaning we can get everything in focus and sharp or completely blurry, even at f4, uh, when focusing near or far on a subject. I don't use this uh, feature as much as I probably should, mainly because I tend to, if I want to increase my depth of field, I tend to focus stack and, and combine it in post. Focus stack it is for another tutorial, but it's essentially where you increase your depth of field by focusing on something near and far. So in this instance, it would be a banister and then a staircase. However, to use this function, you do as follows. Okay, so on this lens, you could actually tilt the lens left and right from the landscape position. But obviously in architecture, I don't think that has many uses. The first thing we're looking at is there's a little flick switch and that rotates the barrel round at the front. There's then a little lock switch, which you have to undo. You sort of flick that back and then it allows you to unlock the nut. Then on the left hand side there's then another rotating pin and you can either move it up or, right or down from that position. 
I always advise, especially with it being a heavy front element, to lock it once it's in position using the lever on the right again. You rotate it back in the same manner. So the most important uh, thing to remember with this lens and what makes it so popular when shooting interior spaces such as this is it has the ability to keep the lines of a, uh, vertical lines of a building parallel, not converging or all over the place such as other wide angle lenses would do or other lenses in your arsenal. In other words, the use of a tilt shift lens removes distortion from the building. In fact, it doesn't add it in the first place. And the reason for that is you keep your camera parallel to the building. You keep it straight to the building. In other words, the mirror sits flush straight to the building that you're trying to photograph or capture. This then eliminates the keystone effect, as it is known, where you would lift the camera towards, like lift it upwards to shoot the ceiling more, or downwards to photograph more of the, say, staircases in front of me here. Okay, so the first thing to bear in mind when trying to photograph a building such as this and remove the keystone effect is to place the camera parallel to the building. So in this instance, we're gonna keep the camera nice and straight to the building. Otherwise, the lens can't remove the keystone effect because if your camera's up, up here or, or say down here, then of course it can't remove that keystone effect. So we keep the lens nice and straight. So once you've composed your shot and you've got everything as you need it in terms of uh, placement of the angles, you can then slowly start to shift your lens into the position to get the architecture as you wish to see it. So in this case, it might be that we're lifting it to actually putting more, you know, a little bit less, say, of this circular rotunda here at the front. You do that here by using uh, the release lever on the right-hand side. This is like a locking nut, so you undo this and then you can use the, the, the little lever on the left side to slowly lift the lens into position. I would never go to its full extension. Uh, it tends to get a little bit soft at the top, very top of the lens. And if you're moving it all the way down, it would get a little bit soft at the very bottom. However, on the indicators that you see here on the left hand side, you can actually just take it back a tiny little bit and make sure that it stops at the final line. You then get your kind of sharpest position of the lens. So we could also use the camera, like I say, in portrait mode, keeping the camera so it's still parallel to the subject. Here, there is a lever, a little flick lever, uh, that's right at the back of the barrel of the lens, and you can actually push that in, and that allows you to twist the lens round. If you then twist the lens round, it allows you to then lift the lens as exactly as you were going to do before. So we, in, this, in this case, obviously, we previously had it like this for you know, when the camera's in landscape orientation. We're now going to move it round like this, so that basically when we lift or lower the lens, you can still do it in the portrait format. It allows us then to be able to get the vertical lined up as we so wished. Metering the light and setting exposure with the tilt shift lens. Now, due to the moving parts uh, having space, when we basically when you move the lens, they're not sealed. So that means there's light leaks that come in when you're trying to move the lens around. It's just small little light leaks. And that means that your best thing to do is actually to set your exposure before you start to shift or tilt the lens. So set the exposure while it's in this position, and then once you've moved it up, you're, it's likely, like it's just happened there, that the exposure will be darker when you're in an environment such as this. Don't worry about it, you don't need to. It's still working like a, like a usual lens, so you can ignore the exposure at that point. So in this position, in the standard position, set your exposure and then you can move and then you can capture your shots. Easy. So stay tuned for more stuff on the tilt shift lenses, including how to make panoramics. Until next time, like, subscribe. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd like to hear from you if you have experienced these lenses and what are your thoughts on them. Until next time, stay safe. See you soon.